Hey, how's it going today? It is me, Captain Energy, and today I wanted to take a look at something that was brought up on Reddit just the other day. There was a person on there who I don't uh, know by name off the top of my head, but they were having some issues with audio clipping in their Reason 12 installation. They just installed Reason 12 or Reason Plus, one of the one of the two. It's they're the same except for the what's included with them. Anyway. They installed uh, Reason 12 and we're having some clips and pops in their audio. And basically, I've seen this problem. I've seen it mostly in my notebook, typically when I use ASIO for all as the uh, ASIO driver. This is in Windows. Uh, Mac, it's a little different. But in Windows, you know, that that uh, ASIO for all driver sometimes has some uh, needs some tweaking or isn't isn't perfect all the time. It, it's not bad. But um, so I asked what audio device he was using, and he is using a Focusrite, which I also use Focusrite, uh, though the audio interface doesn't matter as much as what I'm going to say right now. Whichever audio interface you're using, if you're experiencing this problem, the first thing you want to do is go onto the manufacturer's website and download the latest drivers. Once you get the latest drivers installed, um, make sure that your Windows is up to date. Now, I'm not saying upgrade to Windows 11 because I would not recommend that yet. I upgraded one machine to Windows 11 to test with. So far, so good, but uh, I just want to be sure before I go ahead and uh, initiate that on my other machines that uh, it's not going to cause any issues. I haven't tested every plugin I have, so it's kind of hard to say. But anyway, update your machine, install the drivers, latest drivers, reboot, then see if the problem is gone. If the problem is not gone, what you need to do next is open up Reason. As you can see, I've got it open right here. And on uh, on Mac, it's going to be under File. On Windows, it's under Edit. Find Preferences. That's what you're looking for, the Preferences option. Select Preferences. And once you're in here, you'll see these tabs right up top. You want to be sure that you're in the Audio tab. I'm already in it because I've been you know, testing this out to be sure I had everything together for this video. So here we are, Audio. First thing you want to check is right here, is the audio card that you're using uh, selected? I have a bunch of audio cards on my machine. The, in this case, I want to be sure this is the Focusrite, and it's the USB Focusrite that I have, and it's using the ASIO driver. If it is not using the ASIO driver, and it's using like uh, some of the, like the primary driver here, or like uh, DX speakers, or any of these MMEs, change it to be sure that it's using the ASIO driver. That's one of the first things you want to do. Um, if that was already not ASIO and now it is, try again and see if that fixed the problem. If it didn't, the next thing you want to look at is right down here, your sample rate. Now, given a lot of sound cards will do up to 192 or higher even maybe sample rates, I recommend sticking with 44 kilohertz. The reason I recommend that is because that is the, actually the quality that is used for CDs. Um, and in my opinion, if it's good enough for a CD, a pro CD, it's good enough for me. You're not going to get any higher quality, really, if you're doing audio production. So why, you know, why push it? Unless you just really want that extra pristineness, that extra quality, and uh, I don't know what you'd need it for. But go ahead. 44, 48 is as high as I would ever go. I would never go to 96 or 192, but 44 is where I'm staying. Next is this right down here, buffer size. A lot of times you'll hear people talk about how they have zero latency, blah, blah, blah. And the way they got there was they took their buffer size and dropped it down to, you know, 64, which is as low as it goes. Um, you'll see that I have mine at 512. Now, the interesting thing here is this. I've seen some cards use 8192, 8192. I've seen some cards use 4096. Uh, some use 2048, 120, no, 1024, and 512 seems to be, in my opinion, the sweet spot. The reason I like 512 is because 512 will not only um, give you near zero latency, close enough that you will not notice it, I promise, uh, but it also takes the weight off of the processor enough that you don't get clips and dropouts. Now, down here, I'm pointing down here in the bottom part of the screen where it says DSP. You'll notice this flipping every once in a while, flicking a little white flick, a little white flick. If I drop this down, which I would do, but if I do it, it crashes OBS. So I'm not going to mess with this. I've already crashed OBS three times and lost the video. So if I drop this down to reduce the buffer size and thereby technically increasing the performance of my audio device, um, you'll notice that this jumps up. 
And the higher it jumps, the more power your processor is having to commit to, to your audio production. You don't want this to go too high. And if it hits the top, that's when you start getting problems. I've had simple songs, very simple songs. I'm, I'm talking like bass drums, a lead, and one vocal type thing, and maybe a guitar. Just very simple. Think your basic 80s rock band. And, and they'll kick this thing up to, if I have this down to 64, they'll kick this thing up to about 75%. And I'm sitting there going, geez, man, we're so close to wrecking here. I, it makes me nervous. So I found that 512 is a good spot to be in. So drop it, uh, push it up or drop it down wherever you're at to 512, and that should eliminate most of your problems there. Next thing you're looking at here is the control panel. If you click the control panel, you'll notice that this brings up the actual uh, manufacturer's control panel. You look right down here and you can see that these numbers match up right here, 512, 444, 100. Um, in some cases, maybe not in this particular case because this one seems to work well uh, with the interface here in Reason, but in some cases you'll see that there'll be other options or variations here. The, they won't match up quite right. So make sure that these values do match up with what you've got going on in Reason. Now, try your audio again. See if it's clicking, making dropouts, or whatnot. If it's still doing that, the next thing you have to do, or you could do, is go right down here, and under Performance, you'll see this multi-core audio rendering, hyper-threading audio rendi rendering, sorry. Render audio using audio cards buffer size setting. And, and all these things are meant to improve performance. And they do improve performance. But in some cases, for some reason, it's typically the fault of whatever plugin you're using, honestly. Because most plugins, most modern uh, versions of plugins will use these features multi core audio rendering, hyper threading audio rendering, and rendering audio with the audio card buffer size. Okay plugins will adhere to these once in a while you're going to bump into a, a plugin that does not and that plugin will cause you know crackles in your audio crackling and dropouts the way you fix that then is to come in here and you start turning these off okay i would start with hyper threading get rid of hyper threading and multi-core second and then render audio last try getting rid of those one by one, see if those fix your problem. If those don't fix your problem, uh, I'd be surprised. If they do fix your problem, my opinion is figure out which plugin is causing this problem and replace it. Because chances are the manufacturer has either updated the plugin, um, you maybe would even download an update, but the chances are the manufacturer has updated the plugin to handle these type of things, multi-core pro audio processing, hyper-threading, um, or there are a million other plugins out there that will work with these technologies that could replace that plugin. I can't think of a single plugin that can't be replaced. I can't think of a single instrument that can't be replaced. Um, there are so many ways to, to skin a cat, as they say. But uh, yeah, and that should do it though. If you, uh, once you do all these things, once you go through this and test, you should notice that this little meter here sits at about zero. Maybe once in a while you see a little flick of white, uh, but sitting still, it should never be like going up. I have songs that when you, when you have it on 64, even this song here, which is really simple, I'll see it sitting at about two bars. And uh, I'm just thinking to myself, really, man, there's, there's like four instruments in here, five instruments. How are you, you know, sitting that high in, in the requirements for your processing power? There's not that much going on. So try these tricks out. Let me know if they help. And if you have anything, uh, any other issues, throw it in the comments. I'll try and help you out. If it doesn't, uh, doesn't work, I mean, personally, at this point, I think it might be time to uh, to call on, on Reason Studios, honestly, uh, for you, because I pretty much that's what's there. That's that's what you can fix. Those are the things that you'll get with them to tell you what to do, and uh, we just did them all. So anyway, and that applies pretty much to any, uh, any DAW. There's always an interface there that you can tweak these things. I'm going to do the same video for Cubase. Um, 
but and show the Cubase interface after. But, uh, you know, hopefully that helps you out, and I, I hope that uh, resolves your audio issues. If you have any questions or, you know, just want to get in touch, hit me up in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video, especially if you thought it was useful to you. Uh, I'm really trying to make these videos as short and useful as possible. Anyway, uh, like, subscribe, don't forget to hit the notifications, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.